Hello YouTube, welcome back to the channel. As you may have already noticed in my last drop video, I was very much um, attracted to the J29WS. And see here, I got it. I was a bit hesitant at first because, well, I can't really afford it. Um, which reminds me, there is a new feature now on YouTube by which you can thank me financially. So uh, if you want to support this channel by clicking this thanks button and thanking me for whatever uh, amount you like, that would be very much appreciated. As you might be able to imagine, making these videos is quite a lot of work. I know I could really use some extra motivation to uh, keep doing this. Also, I want to look back at a comment from last video. Um, I made Nathan from Australia commented about something that I said. I said I didn't really know what the medieval reference was in the J86 description. He says the medieval reference in the shoulder patterning, something called Grande Assiette. Nathan, being super French, of course, knows this. Essentially like a 3D spherical structure around the shoulder applied to the undergarments of fighting uniforms for full range of motion when equipped with armor. Awesome mix of old and new. So we learned today from Nathan Aubrey from Australia. And he did get his 86, so I'm very happy for him. So the J29 is obviously a jacket by the brand Acronym, which was co-founded by Errolson Hugh and started producing clothes in 2001. The first jacket being the Type 2371 released in 2002, which is basically a J1A that has been revised about every year, constantly improving and updating with the latest design features and contemporary cuts. Acronym stands at the forefront of the techwear movement and its influence is undeniable. Seeing how much technical clothing has now entered the mainstream with the whole Gorp Core movement and brands like North Face and Arcteryx, which 20 years ago were only worn by actual outdoor enthusiasts and which are like legit fashion brands now. Like many acronym releases, this J29 is a revision. I believe the first J29 was the J29 from Fall Winter 12-13. That one was made of Gore-Tex Packlite and it was also called the J11 Mark II on the acronym site. The J11 being the self-proclaimed first techwear blazer. The first J29s had a shoulder pocket, two holster pockets under the armpits and two pockets on each side and gravity pockets. In spring summer 21 we saw the first J29 windstopper I believe that was already stripped from the shoulder and gravity pockets. Also because it is now a liner instead of shell so it has gained an ox zip in the neck and cuff buttons then in spring summer 22 the j29 upx was released in pertex hd nylon also a very cool jacket um, that sold out instantly it was the first 1.1 version with a different pocket array uh, that makes it look a lot more like a blazer in my opinion uh, which i like very much so it has one left chest pocket like a pocket square pocket with two side pockets more towards the front uh, with top entry with tension zips and open back entries counting just five pockets in total which is not a lot of pockets but I can appreciate the placing very much uh, and the look that it gives. So then last drop the new J29 Windstopper was released uh, the one this video is about which is basically the same design as the J29 UPX but with a Windstopper fabric when I bought it, about a day after the release, there were still mediums and larges uh, available. But soon after that, it did sell out, so I'm kind of glad I, I did get it. Because at first I was a bit hesitant and like nobody bought it. I just, just saw it. the first day, I just saw all four sizes uh, available. And then the next day I saw that small and extra large were gone. And then I kind of panicked and I just ordered it. But I'm glad I did because now I have it and it's sold out. The type of garment is obviously a blazer, so it can be worn with a shirt. And if you put on some dress shoes, I think it's quite dressy looking. But when zipped up, gives a very different look, a bit more like a Gakuran, like a Japanese school uniform blazer. Spoiler, next season acronym will release the J105DS, which will look even more like that. And if you put the hood on and you cinch the cuffs, then it's just a completely other jacket and a very cool looking uh, light windproof and water repellent shell, in my opinion. 
So very versatile and as I said, it can also function as a windproof mid-layer and can be zipped and buttoned into a aquarium shell via the oxid and the cuff buttons. The fabric is called two-layer Gore-Tex Infinium Windstopper, but as I have mentioned before in other videos, that can mean different things. My J68 WS, for instance, has a very different composition and is a very different fabric altogether, but it is also called Windstopper. But this Windstopper to me feels a lot like the Windstopper on the uh, J58 Windstopper. It's very smooth and soft and matte looking, where the Windstopper of the J68 is a ripstop kind of fabric with a light sheen and feels a bit more shell-like. Windstopper is, as the name suggests, a windproof fabric that is very light and breathable, water repellent and fast drying. A really great fabric for in light to medium rain, but I have been in serious downpours uh, before in my J68 Windstopper and even then, especially if the DWR is still good, it will keep you quite dry. And the fast drying is really nice. So even though this Windstopper is different, I don't expect a different uh, performance. And I've never really timed it, but I do feel like it might even dry faster than Gore-Tex Pro when it's completely wetted out. The inside lining is a very different shiny polyester fabric in a brownish color, which looks and feels quite luxurious, kind of like you would expect from a blazer lining. Also quite different than the lining of the J68 Windstopper. So the comfort and fit is really nice. The lining as well as the face fabric feel nice and soft. The inside of the back side pockets is also the outer fabric, which is very comfortable to put your naked hands in. And the fabric does not feel cold to the skin. So I guess it deflects warmth rather than absorb it. But I can also see me wearing this next to skin in spring summer with maybe just a t-shirt under it because Windstopper is also very breathable. It is quite slim, especially around the chest and shoulders. I'm quite a slim person myself, so it, it fits me like a glove. But if you have a big chest or rib cage or broad shoulders, this might get a bit tight if you go through the size and the fabric is not in any way stretchy. The sleeves are a tad long, something that I've heard people complain about uh, previous iterations of the J29 also. But I found that you can fold the cuffs inward, which looks very clean and I think is very cool because then you can have like two modes, if you will fold it inward for blazer mode because then when you wear a long arm hemmed under it uh, the shirt cuff sticks out like this and fold it out the cuff is longer for when you wear the jacket as an outer layer giving you more protection from wind and cold for your wrists. Also because the jacket is quite thin you can quite easily fold the cuff buttons shut without it being too tight on the wrists which it is a bit on the J58. Also a jacket I still need to review, by the way. And even though it's quite fitted, I can wear two thin layers, like a long sleeve, a DS shirt, and a fitted insulator like the J58 under the jacket comfortably. That is kind of the max though, because for instance, if I replace the DS shirt for an AD shirt or a sweater, then it just gets too thick in my opinion and uncomfortable. My J65KM does not fit under it comfortably. Then for the special features, it doesn't have a lot of pockets, just five, just five. But the tension pockets are quite big. Now they are basically two flat pockets. I was wondering how they would look filled because they're next to the belly, but I think it looks fine. I mean, you obviously shouldn't fill them with enormous objects. Although you could when you are doing grocery shopping around the corner, for instance, without a bag, which I often do. You can just chuck quite a lot of stuff in these, especially if you leave them open. The tension zip provides even more space. Again, I really, really love tension zip. It's really one of my favorite acronym features. It's really what sets the J1E apart from the J1A and the my P38E from the P38DS. The back pockets are quite nice to keep your hands warm, even though I have to bend my arms back a bit to access them because but maybe that will help me slouch less. The chest pocket I thought would be very nice for a phone, but to be honest, it doesn't have much structure. So even when it's empty, it kind of bends open. And when I put a phone in, the opening just sags a bit, which doesn't look very nice. 
so it's not really great to be honest i haven't really found use for it yet maybe for airpods or maybe even my wallet but it might be a bit deep for getting small things out so that could be tedious i personally think an extra phone pocket on the right just above the front pocket would have been nice at a spot where one would expect a a ticket pocket uh, on a blazer other than that i think it's fine it, it doesn't have more pockets a few times i've worn it i already found that the tension zips are so easy to use that i just chuck my phone and wallet in in, in those big pockets and then zip it shut and the tension zip pulls the pocket tight so even though the pockets are quite big if you chuck something in there it doesn't really move around or anything when you walk also maybe because the pockets are slightly slanted towards the front so everything just slides into a corner which is also really nice helping things be more secure in the pocket even though they they are not actually secure as mentioned before it has an oxip in the neck and cuff buttons so it can be attached to the shell it comes with three velcro patches for the collar like most acronym jackets i personally never use the force lock because i think it's a cool idea but it doesn't really work the magnets are nowhere strong enough to keep AirPods in place without falling out when you move. And I always put up the logo tape uh, because I like the logo. We know of course that these super cool acronym people always use the blank tape because then you are extra niche and obscure. I have to say that this jacket came with a misprinted logo tape that looked really shit, but then I emailed acronym and then like three days later i received a good one so that was nice there are two buttons to fasten the middle of the jacket blazer style i personally don't really like how the excess fabric with the zipper on it kind of fold over when i do so if you only use the button and not the zippers so probably wouldn't really wear it like that but also use part of the zipper to have it have like a, a cleaner look but I do like the, the fact that the button is there because it's always a fast way to like semi-close a jacket and that feature is like on almost every acronym jacket. So I, I really, so I re do really like the feature, but I think that works a bit better on a more rigid fabric like Gore-Tex Pro because it, then it just stays in place better. And then it has one two-way zipper that is detached at the bottom and goes almost all the way up to the top. The top doesn't entirely close like most of the acronym jacks I have, but that does leave more room for a gator like my NG8 PS that can be a bit tight in some other, like, like the tight collars. Like if I, if I wear the NG8 in my J1E, for instance, that has a very tight collar and I zip it up, then it's, it's pretty tight. So with the tight collars, I usually wear a gator over the collar, but then it's less warm because you don't have the polar tech against your skin. Also, I just like that the collar looks a bit different because then, I mean, I have quite a few black acronym jackets now and I, so I like them looking quite different, even though I think my girlfriend believes that they are all the same. She didn't actually even notice this jacket being new. As I said before, the jacket is quite versatile, so I will show it in a few different kinds of fits.
So I've had this jacket for about a week now and I have to say I, I really like it. I didn't really have the funds for it so I really needed to sell some other stuff. I sold my Nike acronym friends and family tracksuit. I'm still trying to sell my Stone Island Exo Strikes and the 2013 Shadow Project Solo R padded blazer. Stuff I do really like but you know I don't wear them enough and and I just really need to earn some money back for this jacket. So if you are interested and or you want to help me out, please check them out on Reversible and Vinted. I'll put some links in the description or send me a message on Instagram. I will also try to do a short review of them uh, ASAP. But for now, I think this video is probably long enough. I'm gonna be wearing my J29 a lot, hopefully this year, and I will see you in the next one.